I'm going to do this so I get old and I have to crawl up. <laughs> neighborhood um, it looks the same pretty much it used to be really beautiful it had a lot of trees and they formed an arcade and you walk on in the summertime you walk the road under a tunnel of leaves it was beautiful I've lived here all my life well practically all my life except for 17 years of it I came into this house when I was going to high school Mm -hmm. And a lot has happened in this house. I, um, I grew up, my brothers grew up. I got married here, right over here. And, uh, I had lived with my husband in uh, Baltimore for a little while. Uh, then he was, had to go into the army and I came back and there was no apartments to be gotten. So I lived with my parents. And then when Herb got out of the army, um, we both lived here. And then when I became pregnant, my mother moved upstairs and I stayed down here. So I had my child here, and my child here, and my child grew up, and here I am. After Laura was born, um, I think she was about a year old. She was born in 47, and when, uh, I was visiting, a friend of mine was visiting, and I was complaining to her that I was becoming this housewife. I was becoming obsessive, and I needed another interest. And she said, well, her father teaches pottery. Maybe I should try that. And I knew nothing about pottery, and I, I don't think I was particularly fond of it in any way. But I went, he had this basement that he, he converted into a studio and he had, had students and I, I put my hand on the clay and I fell in love. So I packed my suitcase with pottery and I uh, drove to Manhattan on a new driver's license and I went to Pottery Barn. Yeah, I did a... Uh, um, platters and cups and, you know, um, all decorated. I love to decorate the surfaces. Then I um, went to the decorated and design building and I also packed my release and I was looking for an agent. And I went into this one place and he said he was sorry. He liked my things, but he was sorry. He, because I only did one of a kind, and I didn't do any production work. Mm -hmm. And I walked out, and he came running after me, and he said, I changed my mind. He said, put it on, we'll put it on display. The next morning, I got something from him in the mail, and I didn't know what it was, and it was an order. That's one of my pieces. Mm -hmm. Actually, she was a part of a put together. Um, and someone knocked it over and broke it. It was, you know, these old wine kegs, beige with the brown top? Yes. Okay, that was the body. Mm -hmm. And my brother gave me wooden spoons that he had made, mm -hmm. and that was the hands. And oh. then the shoulders was a turned over bowl and then the head was there and then 
I had little vases for a bun that built oh, up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And she knocked it over and broke you, everything. You must have been except a, this. You must have been upset about that. Well, a little. <laughs> <laughs> What would then, where did you move on to from the pottery? How did that oh, happen? that was an accident. <laughs> um, I had a friend who was a, a designer, and I thought it would be interesting to paint on, on some kind of fabric. So he brought me samples, and I did a face, and I was, I put it on the floor, and I was looking at it, and I was built something around it. And I thought, oh, that, that was interesting. So I got caught up in that. And then I did, um, I did an embroidered wall hanging, completely embroidered. And a friend of mine wanted to buy it. And that started me. I got the inspiration uh, seeing her at the Russian fabric, sh Russian costume show at the Metropolitan. And, uh, this is the mother urging her little girl to give the flowers to grandma. Uh, and she's a little reluctant because grandma is not very sweet looking. She looks a little stern. And that's look at the uh, auntie looking down lovingly at the child. What is the hair? The hair, uh, the hair is just cord. Hmm. Just cord. And um, this is antique and it's not holding up and I don't know what to do with it because it can't be replaced. It was ecclesiastic cloth and it's, this is antique lace and that, the, the uh, mother's blouse, uh, I cut out all the elements and glued them on into a pattern. And it looks as if you may have done some handwork on the hat, on the bonnet, or... Yeah, the, the uh, arcade windows are embroidered and fabric, and I uh, put the elements together for the hats. And so the hat is made, they're made of uh, some different stones elements, and, yeah, the, and I put it all together. Mm -hmm. And um, her earrings, earrings, would you believe I wore them? <laughs> I came over with my husband and we looked and I was just stunned. We walked in the door and we were just blown away by all this wonderful color and design and it was kind of like Gustav Klimt come to life because this is the most unusual and interesting and creative artwork I think I've ever run across because and it, it crosses all boundaries, you know, it's, it's painting and it's sculpture and it's fabric art, um, and it's everything all rolled into one. Evelyn is one of a kind. I remember loving doing it because it was something I hadn't done before. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have a lot of variations here, different kind of treatments. Uh, the faces, um, I, the, uh, the ones that are stuffed, they're on cloth. Uh, that face and this face is on styrofoam, and I treated it like paper mache, only I used fabric, uh, transparent fabrics with, that had patterns on them so I could get variations, and I put layer and layer of fabric to get o the color. Over the styrofoam, is that Yes, what over the styrofoam. Mm. The ones uh, these are all small pieces of fabric placed strategically so that they form the face. 
all the big silver uh, motifs on the, on the gown. Uh, I did that on red velvet. It was just red velvet. Uh huh. And I just did that. So how did you do that? I first I did the sign and glue, and then poured glitter over it. The yoke is uh, antique lace, and the headdress is, you know, I just put that together from all different elements. And you see the ruff under her and there? Yes, there, yeah? yes. You'll never guess what that is. No, I wouldn't. They used to use night lights over the headboard. It would look like a half, like a half uh, lampshade. Uh-huh. So it, they hooked it onto the headboard. Oh, uh -huh. Yes. So the dealer said, I brought this. I thought you might like it. I said, what am I going to do with a lampshade? She said, you'll find someone. And it, I did. I turned it into the rough. As most of her women are, they're regal, they're commanding, they're self-assured, they're um, just wonderful to look at, you feel good, you know that they're women of intelligence and power, and um, it just is that, I really love looking at that piece. I have it in a hall, so I go buy it quite often and I get to really admire it and, and enjoy having it. workshop. Uh, this is some of the wall hangings I've sold and they're all along the stairway coming up there are wall hangings that I sold. Uh, this is a finished piece what, what, uh, destined to be a, a ladyboard but the man who always cuts out the background, the wood, the base, he moved out of town so here I am with no no, no money to put her on. <laughs> tassels, antique tassels, just tassels I make, and jewelry that I bought through the years to use on my wall hangings. I say juice pens and little mustard bottles and wine bottles and oatmeal boxes, both sizes. Oh, Botero, he's wonderful. Are you familiar with him? Yes. <laughs> he's a wonderful artist. He has all these gigantically gross people <laughs> and they are so appealing. And um, this is Poirier a great famous designer and this is such a wonderful wonderful book i love Poiré, and he has these wonderful illustrations of his work i really love it <laughs> and this is i'm working on a on a doll and uh i I, I have very peculiar things under here. I have an old lampshade, and then I had to build it up, so I had, someone gave me a round wine bottle, so I stuck that on top of that, and it still wasn't tall enough, so I made aluminum foil, like a dome, and I put it on top of that, and now I'm ready to go. The face is gonna be sculpted, it's gonna be, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a clown kind of thing, um, a woman, woman sorceress. 
she's going to have, have a sorceress's face or painted eyes. That, that's how I visualize her. And she's going to have a globe in her, in her hand, a, a jeweled globe. The dolls all started uh, also kind of accidentally. Um, my daughter gave me one of these wire mannequins and she said, have fun. So I built the doll around it. And I thought, oh, that's nice. I made more dolls. And it was the same sort of thing of fabrics and... and yes, and, and I still building. like to do the fabric. I did the dolls to display the fabrics and the style. This is what started me. My uh, daughter gave oh, me this. Oh, really? One. The mannequin is only this big. Uh -huh. <laughs> I kept building on her until uh -huh. she was this big. So that was the wire, the wire yeah, the mannequin. Yeah, the wire mannequin. And and then you built it with, with I, clay? I don't know how I built it up anymore. It's such a long time ago. Okay, but probably not clay, just the faces. Oh, yeah, it's clay here. It is clay. It's, okay. I always use clay because I had to work it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's my first little sculpted face, it's actually. Wonderful. Well, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and what you is know, it? Ha -ha. Uh huh. Yeah. And what what was the hat? What how was the hat put together? This is ribbon. Uh huh. Yeah. And how about this little an earring? Oh, it, it was an earring. Uh huh. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. And that's I didn't know how to do hands, so I made flowers. <laughs> <laughs> when I became you no know, more difficult for me to do the big wall hangings, this was something I could do. Uh, you know, sitting or working like that. And, and the mannequins are made of different things. So that first one was yes, a wire, yeah. and then... You mean the structure underneath? Yeah. <laughs> well, some of them have oatmeal boxes and wine bottles and tin cans. Mm -hmm. So, whatever. And then, of course, I built it by sculpting the rest of the body. The first time I walked in, into the uh, house, it was, uh, I wouldn't say a slap in the face, but it was a, uh, a visual assault almost. There was just so much and so colorful right in front of you that you almost had to stop where you were, maybe even take a step back because it was so different. Uh, I knew she lived there, but I didn't realize she lived among the artwork that was uh, visible. And uh, in subsequent visits, uh, even expecting and knowing what I was going to see, still, uh, you, before you just walk into it, you sort of give yourself a panoramic uh, view, and then you go in and look at the specifics. We drove over to Brooklyn to, to see Evelyn. And I was just knocked out. She opened the door, and I felt as if I had walked through the looking glass. So many people had told me about, about Evelyn's work, and Evelyn was such a charming person when I met her, um, and I thought, well, I'm going to do this. It was something that I, I, I wanted other people to be able to see. My niece sent me a paper to do collage with, and it came in this lovely tube, and so I had to use the tube, and she evolved. This is all draped from one piece of material and the face is sculpted and this is made from little elements from a dress. You don't have many, a lot of uh, many friends left, but you still do have some friends that you see. Uh, not really. I, I, I have my breakfast and I read a book. Then I go upstairs and I stay up there for five, six, seven hours, eight hours. Mm. Then I come down, have my dinner and read. I, um, I have one friend left in Brooklyn. Mm. 
of God. Sad. I'm very lucky that I can be absorbed uh, and interested in what I'm doing all day. Otherwise, I think I'd be very lonely. I never saw, you know, until I was in a, really in, an adult, what her house is now. I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I went fairly, you know, maybe in the past 15 years, the first time. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, overwhelming. I mean, I had studied fashion, so I was aware of the, the, the beautiful workmanship and the sensitivity to color and balance and design and the layouts. I mean, it's, they're just exquisite. And you know, the scale of her work is um, just overwhelming. One of the things that's so neat about her work is that all of her um, tapestries have dimension to them and it just feels like she's off the wall. It's just such a dynamic part of her um, talent that she brings that to the way she does it. It just makes you feel that it's on the, right on the mark, you know, it just makes the women come alive. Here is a woman of courage, of extreme talent, with a will to accomplish great things, and she certainly has up to this point and hopefully for many years to come. Um, and I think that everyone should have the opportunity to enjoy what she has done. Her whole lifestyle is overwhelming. Everything about Evelyn, her house, everything about every corner, the bathroom, it's just everything there. She looks at everything with a total new eye, and yet sophisticated. The, the, her knowledge, and yet everything is like she's seeing it with fresh eyes, and it's very inspiring. Even her lifestyle of what she does, how she does, when she does, she runs on her own clock and she runs on her own psychological uh, connecting one thing to another. The left side of her head and the right side of her head seem to be working at the same time. Um, the, the total imagination and that how to do it. And then to putting the whole thing together, living in a rarefied atmosphere of her own world. She's a fabulous woman. She's a fabulous person.
Oh, oh I love this. Right. They're going to have take one like that? Oh, wow. where's Leroy with the, uh, the clapper? <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, me too.